Welcome back. Thanks very much for staying with us here on uh, SABC News. You're watching SA Today. EFF MPs uh, told uh, Nosivu Mapisa Ngakula that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa faced criminal charges and uh, he should not be addressing the Assembly. This comes after a former uh, uh, boss, uh, spy boss, Arthur Fraser, laid a criminal complaint alleging that uh, President Ramaphosa was involved in defeating the ends of justice, kidnapping um, of a suspect, interrogating and bribing, and thereafter concealed uh, the crime from police. This relates to the theft of uh, cash from his Limpopo farm in 2020. NCNEC member David uh, Matlobo earlier said that uh, President Ramaphosa had not been criminally charged and those uh, calling for him to step aside are jumping the gun. And let's get uh, more on this discussion. Uh, we are now joined via Zoom by Melusi Ngala, who is a senior researcher at uh, Corruption Watch. A very good afternoon to you, sir. Thanks very much for joining us here on SABC News. Good afternoon, Flo, and uh, thank you for having us. You're most welcome. Let's talk about it then. I mean, you know, you are Corruption Watch. You've definitely red flagged many issues pertaining to corruption. Does this raise a red flag for you? Does the president have a case uh, to, to answer for? Um, strangely, um, as you did your introduction, uh, Flo, I was thinking to myself, not so long ago we were talking about the African National Congress being accused number one, and now it's number one set at the center of a controversy. Um, you know, we can, um, of course, do some political maneuvering about the situation and um, say out loud that, you know, the president does not have to step down, um, due process is, is uh, to follow, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, um, it's a question of integrity, it's a question of um, openness, transparency, in other words, and about honesty. And people in this day and age, in an era where we all agree, uh, even, in the, even the president himself says this quite often, that Corruption is a scourge in our society. So this is a time when one would expect exemplary leadership from a person like him. Yeah. What's been the contribution then um, of Corruption Watch to um, all of this talk? I mean, Corruption Watch was quite uh, vocal uh, during the time of his uh, predecessor, of President, uh, former President Jacob Zuma, and one would expect, you know, something similar now. What has been your contribution and what will it be uh, going forward as we're talking about allegations of uh, corruption? Um, from our end, we're still assessing um, the merits of the matter, seeing... Um, as to how we can intervene. So far, we have been making public pronouncements as we are currently on your platform, um, Flo, to say that, um, you know, when, when we expect ethical leadership, it is very concerning to find an individual who holds such immense responsibility and power as well um, in, in such a huge scandal. You know, it's one that is very concerning and it's one that um, raises questions about the ethics code and as far as his um, office is, is concerned. Um, I'm, re I'm now referring to the ethics code, mm. of uh, the executive ethics code, of course. Yeah. And, and, and what do you make of, a lot of been said about timing. What do you make of all of this timing uh, of, of all of this as Arthur Frazier's opening um, of the criminal case against uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa? I mean, cu it coming before the expected release of the final uh, installment of the uh, Zondo report, uh, which promises to deal with uh, uh, the excesses of the state security agency uh, under his watch. I mean, a lot can be said about timing. Um, we live in a highly political environment. Um, political activism is a thing. Apparently, that's what the EFF is currently doing. Um, when they are calling for the president to step down and not address them in parliament. And of course, as we all know, um, we are heading towards uh, quite a significant elections within the ANC itself. Um, that said, you know, um, we can't, um, say that you know we can't that such matters don't deserve our full attention and that they need, need not be dealt with. Um, it may be as well that of course these are strategic maneuverings mm. um, by a certain faction. But that said, does the question does the president have a case to answer? And by all accounts, based on what um, is stated in the affidavit, it seems 
to be the case. Yeah. And I mean, do you support the president? You know, he, he just said uh, at a press briefing, he was addressing the media just a short while ago where he said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not going to um, entertain uh, the issue. Um, I'm not going to respond to any of uh, the allegations um, or any of the, the, the insults. And he said that the law must just take its course. Do you support the president in what he's saying and saying, listen, I'm, I'm stepping aside from talking about this issue and I'm allowing the, the law to take its course. Do you believe that he should, in fact, um, be engaging on, on, on what happened? I'm sure his advisors are probably telling him not to engage yeah. um, the, everything else that's happening around him. But as a person that um, has claimed to be um, leading by example, one would expect him at least um, to speak to the substantive aspect of this matter. Um, some of his supporters are clearly stating that he's not being charged formally yet. And in that case, you know, you'd expect him at least to deal with issues emanating from this particular case, as it is now a formal case with this with the South African police service. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much uh, for your input. Uh, then uh, we certainly do appreciate it, and we we'll certainly hope to hear more from uh, Corruption Watch as uh, this all unravels. Melusinga, la senior researcher at uh, Corruption Watch. Thank you, sir.